Okay, so we're going to start um, in a seat in our toes pose. So this is a runners, um, yoga for runners. And I know, I think all of us run, don't we? At some point or another anyway, some more than others. Um, so I, I try and run quite often. And so I'm really doing what I find is good for me. Plus I've done a bit of extra research so that um, I'm using maybe some different stretches and things that you might not have seen. Can everyone hear me all right? Yeah? Yeah, good. Okay, so start on your toes pose. You're gonna bring your toes underneath you. Try and include all your toes, even the baby toes. And just sit back on your heels if you can. If that is really too difficult, you can always bring a block or a cushion underneath. That sometimes feels a bit easier. If your knees aren't too good here as well, make sure you pad under your knees. And just bring your hands to your thighs. Let your eyes close down just for a second or two. Roll the shoulders up to the ears, all the way back, down, and round. One more time, breathe in. Shoulders come up towards your ears, all the way back. Squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other, and then soften through the shoulders. Soften through the eyes, and just connect with your breath. So we're not gonna be here too long, it's only a short class. I just want you to let go of everything that you've just been doing and just arrive on your mat so that you know it's not just a stretchy class, you can really focus in maybe on your intention for the day ahead. And this can become something more than just a stretch. So start to breathe in and out through your nostrils a little bit deeper. And just noticing if you're holding on to any tension still. And on the exhale, see if you can soften down a little bit more. Breathing in. And breathing out. And I know this is a hard pose to start with and to focus your attention on your breath, but do your best. My um, theme for my week for myself is one of uh, how to cultivate a bit more inner strength. So, you know, to me that means having the courage of my convictions, being resilient in times of stress or hardship or tough times. So if that speaks to you, maybe you might want to just think about that a little bit during your practice so that when you come off your mat, you can take that into the day ahead. Cultivating inner strength. You know, just take a couple more breaths here, breathing in. Well done, I know it's hard. And breathing out. Of course, you can come out any time. One more breath. Inhale. And exhale. Lovely. Open your eyes. Lean forwards onto your hands. And maybe just release your toes and give them a little bit of a tap. Oh. And then sit back onto your heels. And we're just going to stretch the front of your shins just briefly. So bring your hand on your right hand onto your right knee and just lift that right knee up so that you feel a little bit of a stretch down the front bottom part of the shin. Very often this area can get quite tight, can't it? Breathing in. And breathing out. One more breath in here. And exhale. You can always open the mouth and sigh it out. That feels good as well on your exhale. Bring your right knee down and just switch sides. See if you can stay centered rather than leaning over to the right as you bring your left hand on your left knee and lengthen up. So see how tall you can sit. See if you can engage that uh, belly button towards your spine a little bit. Let the shoulders still stay nice and down your back rather than hunched up. Good, take a couple more breaths. So you're not leaning over to the right, you're really nice and central. Look great everybody. One more breath, inhale. And exhale, release that knee down. And just lean over to one side and come into an easy cross leg. We will get up and we will move in a minute, but we're gonna stretch through the hips. So cross your left uh, shin in front of your right. And then we're just going to take a side bend. So bring your 
right hand out to the side, but a bit more to the back. So behind your right hip. And then lean and reach your left arm up and over. And instead of just stretching into the side, can you then turn your ribs open to the ceiling? And really sort of have a little sense of back bend, but a bit more of a spaciousness in the side body. But you can always bend your right elbow, you can walk your right hand out a little bit more, but keep rooting and grounding through your left hip. So if your left hip's lifting up, send it a bit lower, ground it down a little bit more, feel a bit grounded. Yeah. Open up the chest one more centimeter to the sky. Lovely, and then come all the way back to center and walk your hands forward. Stay high on your fingers so that you're cupping your fingers like this and then reach both hips back. Keep walking your hands as far forward as you can while you lengthen the hips back so that you feel a nice stretch down the sides of the arms and the sides of the waist. And then stay that low and walk your hands over to the right, the opposite way to your front knee. Yeah, so, and again, try and ground through the left hip so that you really feel this outer hip stretch in the left. Keep reaching those fingertips forwards. Maybe you'll feel a nice stretch all the way along the side of the body a little bit as well. Good. And just take a couple breaths here, breathing in and breathing out. And again, inhale and exhale. Lovely guys, walk your hands back to center and then walk them towards you. Lean back on your hands and then just switch the crossing. So we'll do that on the other side. So this time my right knee's in front or right shin's in front of my left. Supasana. And if you notice, I've got my um, heel and my front of my ankle level. That's how I find it easier to find more space as I open up, rather than having sort of shin to shin. I find it easiest this way, but find the best way for you. All right, so we're gonna lean over to your left now. So reach your left hand to the outside of your left hip, a little bit back. Your right arm comes up and over, and then start to open up, peel up that uh, chest towards the ceiling and reach the right fingertips with the palm face down if you can. So reach your toe to pad, that's it, yeah, lovely. And lift and keep grounding through your right hip so that you feel an even more um, stretch. Breathe in, and breathe out. Come back to centre, and then walk your hands forwards again. Lengthen through the arms, pressing down into the fingertips, reaching back with the hips. And then walk your hands all the way over to the left side. So the opposite side from the front knee, feel that length as you ground down through the right hip again. Lovely. Inhale, you don't have to go too low, just go where you are. And exhale, just as long as you're feeling it. Breathing in. And for some of you, this will be really easy, and others, it will be less easy. Doesn't matter. Come all the way back to center. And sit up. Bring your feet together. And we're just going to, just in this warm up session, just lie back onto your back. And we're going to take a half happy baby with your right leg first. So reach through and hold on to the outside edge of your right foot. You can keep your left knee bent, but give it a try straightening that left leg so that you're gonna stretch through this hip flexor a little bit. If that's awkward for your low back though, please don't do it, just keep that knee bent. But really try and hug this right knee to the outside edge, towards your right armpit really, so it's the upper outside edge of your ribs on the right. Really pushing down, just feeling that sensation in this hip. Never pushing past your comfort zone. Know that you can back off. Good. And just take a couple more breaths here. Breathing in. And breathing out. Try to keep those breaths slow and steady. So every time you breathe out, perhaps you can soften into it a little bit more. Good. One more breath. Breathe in. And breathe out. Lovely. If you can, straighten that right leg. Maybe you can hold on to the big toe. Maybe you want to use your strap if it's next to you. Or maybe hold behind the calf if you don't have a strap. 
So you're going to just stretch into the hamstrings. We're doing an awful lot in the hamstrings. So we're just warming up. Don't go to your max right now. We will be doing that later, I promise. And then reach the toes towards your head and lengthen. Maybe you want a little bend, micro bend in that knee so that you don't stretch so much behind the knee. You're more getting into the hamstring. Good. And if you find this really, really easy, how about holding on behind your calf and then pushing your, your calf against your hands and resisting with your hands so that you're feeling this eccentric stretch. And then easing off and seeing if that deepens. Sometimes it's really easy for people. Good, and if you've got your big toe, grab a hold of it, keep a hold of it, and take the leg out to the side. If you've got the strap, strap in your right hand. If you've got just the calf, that's fine. Just take that leg out to the right and keep that left leg straight. Keep working that left hip down so the left hip isn't lifted up. So both the, the back of the pelvis is equally placed on the mat. Lovely. Breathe in, bring that right leg back up to centre and then we're just going to switch sides. So start by bending the right knee, come into that half happy baby on your left side. Hold on to the outside edge of your left foot and really pull the left knee towards the left armchair as much as your hip is allowing you to, but not over. So just working into it, noticing how that feels. And if it feels okay, again, straightening that right leg. So all different options. Just try them out. Keep really working this. Um, knee towards your armpit. Feels so good in my hip. Breathe in. And it's nice to do one at a time sometimes. It makes you focus more on each individual side. And breathe out. And then straighten that left leg up to the sky. Either holding your big toe or behind the calf or using your strap. And just lengthen up with the heel towards the ceiling. Maybe keeping that micro bend in the knee. If that feels like you're getting a deeper stretch, go with it, just play with it. Get to know your body, see what's best for that hamstring right now. And on the exhale, soften into it a little bit more. On the inhale, maybe send that breath. Imagine your breath going to your hamstring, giving it a bit more spaciousness. And then you're going to bring that leg out to the left. So make sure that right hip doesn't lift up. Doesn't matter how far that leg goes out to the side. And it might be different, probably is, from the other side. So keep working that right hip so the back of the pelvis is completely um, neutral. It's not, it's not um, lifting on the right. Completely centered. Lovely. Next breath in, bring the right leg up and bend the right knee. Hug the knees in and then just take a little rock. Come all the way forwards and make yourself your way into a downward facing dog. Good. So when you're down dog, you might want to pedal your feet left and right, left and right. Get a bit of movement in the backs of your legs after those deep stretches. Good. When you're ready, come into a stillness in your down dog for me. So make sure that you're trying to look like an upside down D. So Sarah, can you walk your hands back a little bit or your feet in a little bit so you're less like a plank? That's, that's it, yeah, yeah. And know that you can bend your knees if you need to, if you feel that your back's rounding in any way. Good. From here, I'm gonna do a really nice calf stretch. We did it in deep stretching. So bring your right foot up and bring the toes of your right foot behind that left heel and press downwards. You can either stay here or keep looking back towards your left foot and just walk your hands forward while keeping that heel down, grounded. So you're not going to let that left heel come up, but you're just going to feel a deeper stretch if you walk your hands forwards a little bit. Good, just breathe and hold this. And exhale. One more breath, inhale, and exhale. If you've walked your hands forward, walk them back again so that you're in this down dog. And undo that right toe from your left heel. 
and then reach your right heel down towards the mat. So you might want to shorten your down dog in this if it feels better. And if your heel doesn't reach the floor, it doesn't matter. Just have that intention. Bring your left toes to press on the back of your right ankle. And keep working that heel downwards, stretching in the calf. If it's enough, stay here, or otherwise, again, keep looking back but walking your hands forwards. Have that intention to keep your spine really long. Try and avoid rounding your spine. You're simply trying to feel a deeper stretch in that um, calf muscle. Breathing in. And breathing out. You can always open your mouth and sigh it out. Feels really good. And when we run, obviously, the breath is really the folk, what, what I, um, how I find myself able to sustain a longer run if I can keep that breath nice and steady. It's almost like a moving meditation, isn't it, sometimes? Good. If you watch your hands forwards, just walk them back a little bit and undo that left uh, toe from the right ankle. And then just start to walk your hands back towards your feet so that you'll be in the back of your mat. Come to a forward fold, bending your knees if you need to. So try not to round your back again. Good. And just let yourself lengthen here, lengthen the neck down. Just really to relax a little bit. Wonderful. Okay, from here, look down to your hands and start to lengthen. And then you're going to step the right foot to the outside edge of the left. So the pinky toes should be next to each other. So the right foot comes in front of the left and both your little toes are next to each other if you can. Yeah. You might want your blocks here. You're going to walk your hands around towards the right. So the opposite way from the right foot. The right foot's over on the left side. And you're just going to stretch out. And if you notice that um, left out hip is going out to the side, see if you can keep working that backwards. You might not go very far around. Listen to your back. If it hurts your back, ease back out of it and just fold forwards. Breathe in. It's a really nice stretch the outer uh, side of your legs, the IT band. And breathe out. Come all the way back to centre, lengthen halfway, and just undo that crossing. So bring the right foot back, and then we're going to take the other side straight away. So bring the left um, foot in front of the right, and then to the side. So both little toes are next to each other if you can. You might even have a bend in one of your knees in your left knee, that's fine. And then walk your hands around to the left this time. Notice if your right hand's going out to the right, see if you can keep hugging that in and back. So it's not going out to the side, it's really going back. So you feel a deeper stretch into the IT band. Use your blocks to bring the ground up to you if you need to, or a book or your cans. Breathing in. And breathing out. Good, inhale, come back to centre and just undo those legs. Heel toe the feet out and just let your knees bend and come into a yogi squat just for a second. Stretch into your hamstrings quite a lot. We'll do a bit more, but we're going to uh, just give our hamstrings a bit of a rest. Maybe your elbows come on the insides of your knees. If your heels are up high, you can always lean forward if that's easier for you. And if your heels come down easily, just walk your feet in a little bit. Good. And then stretching through the shoulders, reach your right arm to the inside of your right leg and your left arm up. You can either stay here or you can take that left hand around behind you for a half bind or you can take the full bind by bending the right elbow and so your arm's in front of that knee. But don't let it pull you forwards too much. Just a nice way to open the front body. I tend to store a lot of tension in my shoulders when I run so it's nice for me to just stretch it all out here. So go away is good for you. Undo the bind if you have it and bring the left hand down if that's up. Come back to centre, left hand down, right arm reaches up. Good. Reach up here. And then if you took the bind on the other side, the half bind or the full bind, go for it. You don't need to take the full bind, you don't need to do any of it. If it doesn't feel right in your body and it's not, it's making your lower back hurt or you, you, you know, you're twisting in an awkward way, stay where it's good for your body. 
Breathe in and breathe out. Release that bind and bring that right hand down if you have it. Straighten the knees and just heel toe the feet in. Come up to a halfway lift and just feel the strength in the back body. Have this like a mini locust and reach the arms back. Lovely. And then exhale, fold. And then roll all the way up. You can round the spine as you come up if you like. Reach the arms up. And exhale, hands to your heart. Lovely. Walk to the top of the mat, because you'll be at the back. And we're just going to take a couple of sun C variations to loosen off those deep stretches before we come into a flow, which is going to be really slow and holding the poses, which is going to stretch these areas. All right? So make sure you've got your props near you for when we hold the poses. Ready? Let's go. Breathe in. Reach your arms up. All the way up to Urdhva Hastasana. Palms up. And exhale, arms come out to the side, bend your knees if you need to for a forward fold in Tanasana. Breathe into that halfway lift. So I like to reach my arms back so that I squeeze my shoulder blades together. And exhale, hands come down, right foot back, right knee down. Lovely, inhale, the arms sweep all the way up to the sky. And exhale, cactus those arms, open the heart space. Breathe in, open them wider. Lengthen the tailbone down and exhale, both hands down, straighten the front and the back knee. So it's just a variation on Sun Salutation C. Inhale to stay and exhale, bend into that left knee and reach the arms up. Breathe in here. Exhale, both hands down, step to the top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, squeezing that back body again. And exhale, fold. Press the feet down as the arms lift up. Look up and stretch up. Maybe a little standing back bend if that feels nice at the moment. Lengthen the tailbone down. And exhale, hands to your heart. Other side. Inhale, reach the arms up. Look up and stretch up. And exhale, forward folds into Uttanasana. Breathe in, lengthen and straighten the back body, crown the head reaches forwards, arms back. And exhale, hands down, left foot back, left knee down. Lovely, inhale, the arms come all the way up to the sky, they can come sideways or up straight. Exhale, cactus your arms. But inhale, open that heart space, but lengthen the tailbone down so you feel this in the hip flexor. And then exhale, both hands to the front, and straighten the front of the back knee. Hug the inner thighs towards each other in this pyramid and inhale. So your right outer hips back, your left outer hips forwards. And exhale, fold. Bend into that right knee and breathe in. Come all the way up to a crescent lunge. Lengthen through the sides of the waist. Nice and slow movements. Focus on the parts of your body that need a bit more spaciousness. Exhale, both hands down. Step to the top of the mat, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, squeeze the back body again. And exhale, fold. Feet ground down as the arms reach up. Look up and stretch up. Give yourself a nice standing back bend. Bird of And exhale, hands to your heart. Good, we're going to move through this once only, this slow flow. Let's go. Breathe in, reach the arms up. Look up and stretch up. And exhale, forward folds into Uttanasana. Inhale, that halfway lift. Squeeze the arms back, shoulder blades, squeeze together. Exhale, both hands down. And step back into a plank for this, just this one time. Not doing too many vinyasas. Inhale in your plank, firm up through the core. And exhale, lower all the way down onto your belly. So your knees can come down or you can take it all in one line. Come in into a locust pose, so reach your arms behind you and interlace them. Press the feet down to start with and start to peel your shoulders, your heart up. But keep the back of your neck long and lift your arms away from your low back. Keep pressing down into the feet. With another breath in, start to lift your feet and lengthen. Inhale here, keep the back of the neck long, don't look up, look just ahead of you. And exhale, lower all the way down, release your hands. Hands either side of your shoulders, press back to a downward facing dog. 
Lovely. So we're not doing too many vinyasas. That's probably one of two that we're doing. Inhale, reach that right leg up to the sky and bend that knee and open the hip. So really ground through the left heel and keep that right shoulder level with your left so it's not lifting out to the side. Good. Next breath in, straighten up into three leg down dog again. And then exhale, curl that knee into your chest and step your right foot forwards. Keep the left knee up, coming into a high crescent lunge. So adjust your feet a little bit wider if you find this challenge with balance. Reach the arms up here. Lengthen that tailbone down so you're really feeling even more strength in this hip flexor on the left. Good, then reach your left arm forwards and your right arm back, coming into a standing revolved crescent lunge. Yes. Hold it here or reach your right arm back towards your left leg, your left thigh, and your left arm up and over. But try and keep the bend the same in your right knee and try not to let your low ribs and your belly pop out. Hug everything in. Breathe in, you should feel really nice lengthening through the side here. And then exhale, face forwards and bring the right arm up again. Ooh, inhale here. And then exhale, start to straighten both legs as though you're coming into a wide leg forward fold with your arms up. Hands come to your heart, bend into your left knee, keep the sole of your right foot down. We're not going into the full Skandasana, you're up high, so you should really feel a nice groin stretch, especially on the right side. And then reach your arms out wide. Yes. Keep leaning forward, reaching forward with your chin and sitting your hips back even further so that you feel this. So you could go a little bit wider with your legs, I think, Rachel, I'm not sure. <laughs> Give it a try. Yes. Keep your chest high. Yeah, for three, two, and one. Both hands come down onto the mat now, and then turn to face the back of your mat. I'm very sorry, but just follow my voice. I'll, I'll uh, guide you with my voice. So you're in this um, high lunge with your left knee bent, left leg forward, right leg straight. Just bob up and down, or forward and back a couple of times. Feel how that feels in the hip flexor on your right now, and how it feels in the back of your hamstring on your left. Lovely. Then bring your right knee down, protect it with padding if you need to. And maybe heel toe your left foot to the side, to the left side. And stay in this lizard lunge, either on your hands or you can come down onto your elbows if you have the space. So you might want to bring both elbows down. But if it's making your back round, then I don't want you to come down so low. Just stay up higher or use a block, bring the ground up to you. You can always come on to the um, pinky toe edge of your right foot, your left foot, but try not to let your ankle sickle. So try and try make there be no wrinkles in the front of your ankle. Yeah, it should feel really nice. Good. From here, if you're on your elbows, you might want to come up. And then you're going to bend that right knee. Bring your right hand more forwards. Sit down into that right hip flexor a little bit as you reach the left arm forwards, up and back. If you grab a hold of that toe, then that's great. If you don't grab a hold of it, that's still great. It doesn't matter. So if you have got hold of it, maybe you want to try pressing the foot against the hand to open up into a twist a bit more. If you haven't quite got hold of it, maybe straighten that right knee and see what it feels like to sink down into that left that right hip flexor a little bit more. How are you doing? You should feel a really deep stretch. Breathe in. Lovely, everyone. Mind your knees, Lisa, won't you? Make sure you pad them and breathe out. Let go of that foot if you've got it and slowly turn around to face the front of the mat. Heel toe that left foot to the center of the mat. Tuck the back toe under, your right toe under and lift that back knee. Good, and then you're coming all the way up into a crescent lunge again, facing the back of your mat. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, again, pivot around so that you're probably facing the uh, same side you did a minute ago, into that wide leg forward fold. Reach the arms out wide. And this time we're going down into this Prasarita Padatanasana. But I'm gonna give it a slight difference, so listen up. Hands can come forwards like you're walking them into a down dog. 
and then your hips will be going back. Good, so this is just a little bit of a different stretch. Maybe you'll feel it into your shoulders. Let your neck hang between your upper arms so that you really feel that you're stretching the front of your body. You can always open your legs wider if you need to, as well as the back of your body. So you're stretching, the, not the front of your body, you're stretching the shoulders as well as the back. Good. Notice what it feels like to have a micro bend or to straighten the knees. One more breath, inhale. Ah, and exhale. Walk your hands back to centre. And then bend into that right knee now, coming into that high skandhasana. But on this side, your arms are reaching forward again, like that down dog a moment ago in your Prasarita Padatanasana. Yeah. So you really feel this. Press into the outside edge of your left foot. So if that pinky toe bit of your foot's lifting up, see if you can ground down into that and sink down a little bit more, but not too low. I want you to feel this really nice sort of stretch, also a bit of compression in your right hip. Lovely. Walk your hands back to center, and then walk your hands around to the front of your mat again. Ta da <laughs> Coming into that lunge with your right leg forwards, and reach your arms up. Breathe in here. And then we're gonna lower that left knee down for a count of five, slowly, four, three, two, one and a half, one, hand down. <laughs> Bring both hands down. Good, maybe walk that left foot back, that left knee back a little bit, protect the left knee if you need to. We're gonna come into half splits, Ardha Hanumanasana. Work that right out hip back and the left out hip forwards. And either stay here, if you've got the blocks, you might want to use the blocks just to give you that support so you can stay along your spine. If you have Hanumanasana or you have any variation of it, maybe you can walk your right heel forwards, your left knee back, right heel forwards, left knee back. Keep scissoring those inner thighs so that your hips and your SI joint, your sacral joint isn't um, at an odd angle that's going to cause you pain. If you've got blocks or even a pillow, it's nice to put it underneath, especially if you're working with it. Good. You might want to tuck that back toe. And if you're finding that you're really leaning too much onto the right hip, bend yourself over that front leg as though you're taking that twist like we did at the beginning in that lunge, so that you're staying upright and still trying to work these, uh, this right out hip back, left out hip forwards takes a lot of discipline because all you want to do, and if you know you can touch the floor, which I know I can, it's, it's easy just to do a cheat, but it's not doing my lower back any good when I do that. So I try and teach this way because I know that when I do it wrong, I get pain. And I don't want anyone to get pain. <laughs> breathe in. And breathe out. One more breath, inhale. Well done guys, you all look really good. And exhale, super strong. Good. Slowly, you're gonna press down into the ground or the blocks and start to lift up your front foot, bringing your back leg. Remove any cramps out of the way and find yourself back to down dog. Ooh. Maybe pedal the feet out again. We'll just do one little vinyasa with a nice uh, locust pose again, just to reset. So inhale, come forwards to a plank. Exhale, you can lower all the way down in one long line, but hug the elbows closely, protect your shoulders. Come all the way onto your belly. Arms reach back, interlace your hands. And let's come into a full locus straight away. Inhale, reach the toes back. Keep the back of the neck long. Hug the belly button away from the mat like you're trying to not squish that very precious blueberry. You want to eat it in a minute. <laughs> three, keep breathing two, and one, lower all the way down, hands under your shoulders, downward facing dog, four, one more side, <laughs> left leg reaches up to the sky, inhale, three leg down and off, bend that knee and open the hip, lift that knee up to the sky, and keep grounding down through the right heel as much as possible, and keep squaring that left shoulder, so if you're Left shoulder's lifting up and out, and you're sort of in a twist. See if you can bring that square a bit. Then straighten that left leg up to the sky, and exhale, bend that knee into your chest. Step the left foot forwards, 
Adjust your stance if you need to for balance. And come up into that high crescent lunge. Reach the arms up. Good. So here again, remember, you can always have a bend in that back knee, but lengthen the tailbone down so that you feel a little bit more engagement. Engage through the lower ribs, hug the belly in. All these sort of engagements are going to make a difference on your hip flexor here. Right, Loss? <laughs> and then reach your right arm forwards and your left arm back. Coming into this nice um, revolved crescent lunge. Yeah, so if your left knee is straightening a little bit, see if you can be focusing on that, bend it, but keep lengthening the tailbone down. Stay here or reach the left hand towards your right thigh and your right arm up and over behind you. So reach your right arm up and over. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You're there, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, well done. One more breath, inhale, and then exhale. Release that hand from the back thigh, reach both arms up. Okay, next breath in. You're gonna again pivot and turn as though you're coming to Prasarita Padmatanasana. Excuse my bottom, I'll turn to face you. Inhale here, and then exhale. You're gonna bend into that right knee again. Come into Skandasana, that high Skandasana in your right knee. Yeah, reach the arms out wide, press into the outside edge of the left foot. Good, then bring your hands to your heart. Allow yourself to sit down more into that knee and then turn the left toes up. Just feel this in the underside, so you're not in that right hip so much, you're really feeling a bit of, a, a bit of ease actually. Right hand comes inside that knee and reach the left arm up if you have the space. Lovely. Good, and then slowly you're gonna bring that hand down, turn yourself to face the back of the mat again. So your left knee's gonna be down. I think that's right, isn't it? Yes. Now leave, leave your left leg up first, sorry, and bob back and forth. Bring your hands inside that right leg. Maybe the right heel toes, the right foot out to the right. Just bob back and forth, just get a sense of if you can undo any little knots there. And then bring your right knee, your left knee down. And heel toe that right foot out to the right a little bit. And maybe you come down in this lizard on your elbows, but not rounding, so you're drawing the heart through. You're really trying to keep a sense of length in the spine. If you're up on your hands, that's fine too. You might want to come onto the outside edge of that right foot so that you've got like this sort of the sole of your foot pointing towards you, you can see it. But again, try not to sip all that ankle. Not have any creases in it. One breath, inhale. And exhale, bend that left knee. Don't forget, protect that left knee if you need to. Reach around with your right hand. If you can, you're gonna grab hold of it and then press the foot against the hand to get a twist. If you can't quite, it doesn't matter, it's quite nice actually, just to sink down into that left uh, hip a little bit more and feel that hip flexor in a different way stretching. So both are good. Yeah, good use of strap, I love it. Stay with your breath and that theme of building inner strength. So some poses you will find, some asanas that are tougher. And it's the ability, and especially when you hold them and they're not comfortable, as long as they're not hurting, as long as it's not pain, it's just, you know, the discomfort of stretching and trying something new, you're all right. But use that inner strength, that breath, that awareness, how am I reacting? Lovely. If you've got hold of that foot, just let it go. Turn your body to face the front. And then heel, toe that foot back to the centre. Tuck the left toes under, lift that left knee. Firm the inner thighs towards each other. Keep the core long, the ears should strong. Reach the arms up. Come into a high crescent. Inhale here. And exhale, start to straighten both legs. Reach the arms out wide. Your feet are parallel. If you find it really easy to forward fold, bring your feet a little bit closer. If you find it trickier, bring them further apart. Open up this heart space first, and then come forwards, hinging from your hips leading from your, with your chin all the way forwards and this time hold on to the outsides of your feet if you've got that access and the elbow is going to go out to the side or up as you draw the head down towards the mat. 
If you can't hold your feet, it doesn't matter. You're still a lovely person. <laughs> Bring your hands underneath your face and just lengthen down. But keep looking forward so it's almost like your shoulder blades are squeezing back towards each other rather than rounding apart from each other. So squeeze shoulder blades, even if it means you're not bending as deeply. And sit back a little bit so you've got a little bit more weight um, in your heels to start with. Good. Now try moving the weight a little bit more into your toes, but keep your hips and your heels in one line. Notice if that deepens the stretch a bit. So you've got a little bit more weight in the balls of your feet, less weight in the heels, but your hips are still in line with your heels. Lovely. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good, and then you're slowly going to come up and then bending into that left knee, coming into Skandasana on your left side. Start with that high Skandasana with your arms out and then sit down into that left foot. Maybe your heel's down, maybe it's raised and your right toes are up to the sky. Yeah. And just notice this. Use your arms if you want by bringing your left elbow on the inside of your left knee, reaching your right arm up to the sky. Yeah, just feel a bit more spacious and open. And then exhale, bring that right hand down and then turn your body, pivot to face the front so that your left foot's in front now. Good. Come all the way up into that high crescent lunge. Again, lengthen this tailbone down. Engage the core, lower down for five, keep reaching the arms up, four, three, two, and one. Right knee comes down, protect that right knee if you need to. And then either walk that right knee back or the left heel forwards. Prepare for your Hanumanasana or Ardha Hanumanasana, splits or half splits. Come back, flexing the left toes up to the sky. Left out hip comes back as the right out hip goes forwards. I'll turn to the side. Get your props ready if you need them. I quite like to sometimes just have a pillow underneath my thigh ready. And then just, I also like to, rather than just go back with my right hip, I like to move forwards with my um, left heel. My right foot walks back, my left heel walks forwards. So that I'm trying to stay really central with my pelvis rather than turning around towards the right side. If you're leaning a lot onto your left, see if you can, you might want to block, walk around so that you're over towards the left. You're sort of almost like twisting. That will just keep moving those inner thighs towards each other and that pelvis in neutral. Maybe come onto the toes of the back foot, that feels okay. Ooh. If you're upright, it's pretty hard being upright, isn't it? Well done, you want to look really good. Just be grateful for where you are. One side is always going to be feel a lot different. Three, two, and one. If you've got prop, just release it. Press your hands down. Lift back with that left foot, maybe forward with the right knee. Move any props out of the way. Hands down, downward facing dog. Oh, we're nearly there. How am I doing for time? I told you I always go over. Going to do some really nice finishing stretches now. So we'll come on to pigeon. Reach the right leg out. We focused a lot on the hamstrings, but let's focus on this outer hip a bit with a twist. Bend that right knee and bring the knee behind the wrist, the right knee behind the right wrist. If you have sensitive knees, do this on your back. You can lie on your back and take a figure four with your right ankle over your left knee. So, you know, listen to your body. Walk your, he'll take your left leg back so it's in a straight line. And if your right hip is not touching the mat, use a block or a cushion underneath that right hip so that you are protecting your right knee. All right, reach it. And then, then you can lean more into it as well. All right. And then you're gonna just take a nice side stretch. So you're gonna go in the opposite way from that right knee. You're gonna walk your hands over to the left, similar to what you did at the beginning, but now you're in the pigeon. And you can reach that left arm more forward so you feel 
a bit more into the um, the uh, oh, what's this muscle called again? <laughs> you know what I mean. The lats and the size upper back, size of the ribs. Maybe you rest your right ear. Maybe your left hands down like mine with the elbow up. That feels good to me. As long as you're feeling this in your hip as well. Don't overdo it, Ali. Go to where it's good for your hips. You know. Let everything start to settle down. Let your breath slow a little bit. Let your mind come back to being here. We're not here for much longer. And then walk your hands back to center. Bring your left hand, your right hand forwards and your left hand forwards, just stretch forwards. Maybe reach forwards a little bit more. And then come all the way up with both hands, sitting on that right hip. You're gonna grab a hold of that left leg if you need to, bring the left leg all the way around so that your left knee's on top of your right, crossing the knees over each other for Bommel Kassala. If you need to, you're gonna use a block or you're gonna use your pillow to sit on to if you find this really difficult. I also like to lean forwards, wriggle my knees really tightly so my inner thighs are squeezing tightly and then sit back down so I'm in between my heels. Good. So we're just stretching the outer hips. So your left lip knees on top, reach your right arm up, bend the elbow, and you can hold on to that elbow and pull that hand, pull the elbow so that it's sort of lengthening your tricep. The fingertips reaching between your shoulder blades. You can stay here or you can reach your left arm out to the side. Really try and give your shoulder a lot of space. Bend that elbow and walk that, those fingertips up your back. Maybe your fingers touch, maybe they don't. If you find that your neck's coming forward like this, just lift your neck up and you might lose the grip. That doesn't matter, but stay more upright and maybe hold on to the elbow. That might be better for you. Yeah. So go where it's good for your body. And each side is different. Open the elbows out wide. So the right elbow is going to open out wide so that you couldn't even see it if you were looking sideways to the right. Yeah. Breathe in. And breathe out. Release the hands. Oh. Bring that right hand onto your left knee and your left hand behind you. Lengthen as you breathe in. And as you exhale, take a twist. Sometimes it's nice to take, grab a hold of that right foot and maybe reach the left arm around behind you for a little half bind. But, you know, it's not necessary. Just take a twist if that feels best. Inhale, get long in the spine. And exhale, let your belly go soft. And let yourself find a bit more twist and ease in your twist. Never overdoing it. And actually, if you bring your chin back to centre, that's how far you're twisting. But sometimes it just feels nice to look back. Good, then come back to centre. Reach forwards, undo your legs, step back to down dog. Maybe shake off a knee, a hip. We'll just do that on the other side. How are you doing? <laughs> you're all such strong women. Reach the left leg up to the sky. Inhale and let's take pigeon on the left. So bring the left knee down. And the shin doesn't need to be parallel to the front of the mat. You know, most people's knees, that's not good for. So just go where you can feel this in your left hip. Look back and heel toe that right leg straight behind you. Try and get it in a straight line. And again, protect that left knee if your hips up high off the floor and your knees hurting. You know, use the protection, use the block under there. And you can do it lying on your back as well if your knee, knee's dodgy, you know that. And then we're going to lengthen and take that nice side body stretch. So walking the hands in the opposite direction from that left knee, so over to the right. And maybe you want to sink down as you press down into that, um, the outside edge, maybe the little finger edge. So that you're stretching really into the side body. So you might have your thumb pointing up and your little finger on the mat. Pressing down into the right hand. You all right, Lisa? You okay there? Yeah. Good. If this doesn't feel good in your knee, Lisa, you should do it lying on your back. Just be mindful. Breathe in. 
and breathe out. Then the next breath in, start to press back, come all the way forward, so just briefly lean forward, reach forward with your hands, your arms are active. And walk your hands back towards that front knee. Lean onto the left hip, bring that right knee up and over. I hope your hip's managing this, Nikki. So your right knee's gonna be on top of your left. And again, I like to really switch forwards and wiggle my thighs closer together and then sit back between my heels. And if you need to sit on a block or a cushion, go ahead. And then this time, you're gonna bring your left arm up first, bend the left elbow. So it's the opposite arm goes up to the leg that's on top. And then you're gonna press down to try and get those fingertips walking down between your scapula. Try not to let this bulge you forwards. If it is, just look up, be conscious of that. And then the right arm can come out to the side or you can keep holding where you're holding. If you don't quite grab, I don't grab on this side. Maybe you want to hold your t-shirt or your bra. Maybe you just want to keep working that back so you're feeling a nice tricep stretch this side. Stay long in your body, long in your neck. Breathing in and breathing out. One more breath here. I find it's really hard. Inhale. I must develop in a sleep. <laughs> and exhale. Oh, release the hands. Ooh, take that twist. Maybe your shoulders need a roll first. Bring your left hand to your right knee. Maybe the hand is like the, the forearm is lengthened. Lengthen up first as you breathe in. Exhale, twist. So again, maybe you're holding on to that. Uh, Right foot, left foot, in your left hand. Maybe you're reaching around for a half time. Maybe you're not. Then inhale to grow taller, try not to lean back on that right hand. Exhale, soften the belly. Maybe start to soften the gaze. And take that twist. As we come all the way back to centre. Lean back on your hands, undo those legs, give them a little shake. One more asana, you're gonna lower down onto your backs. And we're gonna take a, a, this I find is a really nice way to lengthen the front body, it's a back bend. You can do over down your asana if you want to. If you want to, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna guide you into this variation of bridge. So your feet are hip width apart, quite close to your hips. Press down and lift your hips up to a bridge. And then I'm gonna bring one hand under my sacrum so that the palm is supporting that sacrum and then the other hand under the other sacrum, the other side, so that my elbows are underneath me and I'm really lifted up and lengthened here. This is just a variation on the supported bridge. You can use your block if you want to. Don't do it if it feels, you know, you've got pressure in your neck or anything. It's just a nice way to sort of open up the front body without using any props and without having to go into that full wheel. But if you're in wheel, take your breaths in wheel. How are we doing? So three, really open up that chest a little bit more and try and get your chin away from your chest. So you're not chucking your chin in, you're lengthening the back of the neck, looking straight up. Good, heel toe that left foot into the center, just lift your right leg up if you like, or you can stay. And then bring the right foot down, right foot goes to the center, supports you as the left leg reaches up. Yes. Lovely. Beautiful. Bring that left foot down, release the hands to the side, and slowly lower all the way down onto the mat. Hug your knees in, just massage your low spine. And then just a 60 second, you can take longer, Shavasana. I know it's hard to do this when you're in your own home, so many distractions. But give yourself this time. If you've got it, 60 seconds is nothing. So take a big breath in. Open your mouth. <sighs> Sigh it out. Bring your legs long. Bring your arms out wide. Palms up. I'm going to time this. 60 seconds. 
let go of the breath, let the whole of your back body just sink down into the earth. And let the whole of your front body sink down into your back body. that ability to be quiet, that ability to have silent times when there's no distractions, and when we can just be with ourselves and just notice how we're doing. If you want to stay in your Shavasana a little bit longer, you can stay. If you want to come out and move on with your beautiful Sunday, then just start to reach your arms behind you, bring your feet together, lengthen back with your fingertips and all the way down with the toes, stretch. Bending your knees, hugging your knees and giving yourself a loving squeeze and rolling onto a third side and gently pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat. Roll your shoulders when you're here up, back and down. Balance your heart if you like with gratitude. Thank you for taking time, friends. Namaste. And you can 